Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible study as we continually write and divide the Word of Yahweh as a workman. Now, in the last video uh, I put up when I asked the question, uh, how will the Judeans, or I said Israel, of course, uh, be in Judah uh, or the northern kingdom there? Uh, so, particularly Judah, because everything turns to Jerusalem. Uh, here, as we close out this age and the Messiah comes, uh, that's why you two witnesses, uh, everything, salvation is of the Jews or uh, of Judah, and it will return back to Judah uh, in, in these end times that we are in now. And that's why you have your two witnesses. Everything focuses and goes back after the uh, <clears throat> the gospel is preached to the uh, the nations as a witness, and then the end will come. That's why Paul says the fullness of the Gentiles come in. He's talking about entering the kingdom, and, and, and Christ says in uh, Luke 21 that uh, Jerusalem will be scattered and trotted down until the time by the Gentiles, until the times of the the Gentiles uh, uh, are fulfilled. Uh, that's uh, palero, which means to fill up. Uh, so that's Christ, what Christ said there, what Paul said in Romans 11, uh, <clears throat> and what Christ said in Matthew 24, that this gospel will be preached as a witness to the nations and then the end will come. That's all focusing on when uh, the end will come as far as the Gentiles being uh, grafted into the commonwealth now of Israel. Now, so when I asked the question about Judah, according to your prophets, uh, according to Ezekiel or Jeremiah, Isaiah, uh, Hosea, according to your prophets, all your prophets that prophesy the gathering of Israel, uh, the question was, uh, how is that going to come about, according to the prophets? And so now I will say this. Uh, on the uh, resurrection of the first fruits, where a lot of people uh, don't see that, don't believe that, and I understand that. Uh, when Simeon prophesied in Luke 2.34, that was a sign that would be covered up. It would be, uh, that's, that's a prophecy. Uh, <clears throat> the Judeans paid large money to cover up the resurrection, and that's the only sign the Messiah give that uh, give Judah. The sign of Jonah in the belly of the well, so shall be the Son of Man three days, three nights. That's the only sign. Now, that was an earthly sign or an earthly miracle, but it was not a heavenly sign. Now, when, 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 I, when the Lord showed me about the sign years ago, uh, what is this sign? In other words, uh, that Christ was speaking in, uh, when they see the sign of the Son of Man, Matthew 24, 30. And this is after the tribulation in order. This is at the, the fullness of the Gentiles have already come in. <clears throat> the resurrection has already taken place according to Enoch calendar, the last day of that year. Uh, so starting a new year, uh, on when the sun commences or sits down on the horizon, <clears throat> that's what the scripture is showing me as far as the resurrection of the dead, what Paul is talking about, and those alive remain be changed. So then you have uh, the witnesses are called up first at midday uh, at a place, and then at sundown you have the resurrection, and then you have... Uh, uh, great fear comes on them that seen the two witnesses stand up and they're called up. They, and then it's like I say at sundown, well, we've got to realize the resurrection of the dead there. Uh, 
those who have been counted worthy to be raised from the dead at that time uh, or to be changed, alive that remain to be changed, that resurrection is going to be taking those that are in Christ all over, everywhere. And it's going to be also your patriots and stuff, uh, uh, David, uh, John the Baptist, uh, all these uh, uh, Jonah, these prophets. Jonah being, uh, his tomb was in the city of uh, Nineveh, which is Mosul, which is what's being fought over right now. I said that took over there two years ago. Now America, along with Iraq, is trying to take that city back. Well, they destroyed or blew up the tomb of uh, Jonah there. But I'm saying there's going to be that resurrection. So once, once the resurrection at the end takes place, then the next thing you see is the heavens are shaken, the moon does not give its light, the sun is in darkness. Uh, we have a complete uh, daytime, nighttime of darkness. Why? Because there's going to be a sign in heaven given. Christ says, and then they was uh, then shall appear. The word appear in the Greek is the same word when the star appeared uh, for the wise men. Uh, Christ talks about uh, as lightning comes from the east it, that the sign in heaven uh, in heaven that lightning or that bright light uh, coming from the east to the west uh, is the same way where the star came now I had said before that uh, I, when I when the Lord showed me about there's got to be a sign for them to repent. This is what uh, this was the question. In other words, uh, we hear the gospel by the preaching or or an evangelist, uh, the true gospel. God quickens us in Christ, makes us alive for those that hear and believe, and then we grow up as a child, being taught and conformed to the image of, the, of our Savior. The Messiah, all the Father gives to Christ shall come to Christ. Uh, we're not born of the blood, the will of the flesh, the will of man, but of God we're birthed. So there, there again, when I tie in, if uh, Isaac's seed, born from above, uh, which is Christ's seed, which is uh, birthed from above, which we are Christ's seed, Paul, Paul says, uh, we are the... Uh, uh, promised seed of Abraham through Isaac, through the Messiah. And Paul says, like Isaac there in Galatians 4.28, he said, we are like Isaac. Why? Isaac born of the free woman, heavenly Jerusalem. We're also, that's where Paul says, she's the mother of us all, pos, all, talking about uh, the heavenly uh, uh, beings that uh, are resurrected like to angels. Okay, so Paul calls this the epigalia of the promise, promise made by God to Abraham and Sarah that he, they would have a son called Isaac. And we see they had, by the flesh, Sarah sent Hagar in, and that's where we have uh, the birth of Ishmael. Uh, but the promise was to come from above, uh, as you go over Genesis 18, we see the angels come to Abraham to tell him exactly when Isaac will be born, which is on Passover. Now, uh, so when I ask the question uh, about what is going to turn the first to Judah, and then the outcast of those that are scattered there, turn them to their Messiah. <clears throat> well, the answer is there's going to be a sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Now, <clears throat> we, there again, you gotta you got to think those that are made alive in Christ uh is by the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, 
and we are the uh, epigalia of that promise, which means a divine assured message, which comes from the promise of God. Uh, God also promised Abraham uh, that Israel would fulfill uh, the, uh, the Torah prophecies of being a nation uh, and that Christ would sit on uh, the throne of his father and, and rule Israel. That has never happened. It has, uh, Christ is his first advent. That's what they were looking for that to happen. It's going to happen. So, but there again, uh, they're going to get a sign from heaven because uh, Judah always seeks a sign from heaven. The Greeks seek knowledge, and Paul says uh, that we as the promised seed preach the uh, crucifixion and the resurrection. So it's very important, people. So when I ask that question, now there again, I had talked uh, and put out that I believe the sign in heaven would be the resurrection or, or a sign of the first fruits. <clears throat> well, after, as the Lord reveals more and more and more of these end time events, uh, when I go back and look at that, and, I, and there was no sign given in heaven in, the, in that generation of uh, Christ and when he come in the first, in that first century in that generation. And the only sign Christ gave that generation was to the sign of Jonah. That was an earthly sign. So looking at that uh, prophetically then, the resurrection would not be a sign in heaven because uh, he didn't give them a, uh, the resurrection as an earthly miracle. Uh, so the sign there, and then looking at the prophecy of where, I, where the Lord showed me uh, that that sign or the resurrection of many in Israel and, and Simeon's prophecy in Luke 2.34, that would have been, uh, that, couldn't have, that, that sign was covered up. It was an earthly sign that the Jews paid large money to cover up the resurrection. Now, so I was out of bounds there as far as uh, the 144,000 they see coming uh, or, uh, or a sign that would represent that. No, uh, the sign, the question though, the answer would be not, I wasn't asking for what is that primarily sign, but there would be a sign in heaven of the Son of Man. And that would in turn cause uh, Judah starting in Jerusalem as Zechariah 12.10 says uh, the tents of Judah David's house uh, Nathan and their wives and so on Simeon their wives, which would represent the uh, southern kingdom and then and then of course uh, he would make a highway to gather the outcasts there from all around uh, the original Abraham's land and he would bring those into uh, into Jerusalem there or into the the land so uh, the answer then would have been a sign from heaven uh, and that's when they're going to repent because the, the Father is going to give them this sign uh, as Christ descends from heaven to resurrect uh, the two witnesses raised first and then the, the promised seed. And so that's why we're called up to meet him in the air in the clouds. Now there again, for when you when you're looking at Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel's prophecy, when he gathers one stick for uh, Judah, one stick for uh, Ephraim, or the right hand of Joseph, and they'll become one nation. Uh, they won't be split anymore. There won't be any jealousy anymore. Uh, uh, and there'll be one shepherd. 
when I when uh, Isaiah speaks of it in Isaiah 11, which is very clear. In that day, he was extending his hand the second time. <clears throat> well, you just I mean, there is people that have a lot of that. Some people are having lots of problem because they preach the two houses or the prophecy of the two houses there. And some have them uh, gather and start to gather the two houses three and a half years uh, starting on Passover and then three and a half years later in the fall feast there'll be a resurrection. Uh, I've been all in that, I've been involved in, in those prophecies. I believed at one time the resurrection take place on first fruits and I believe it that I'm Look like the resurrection would be take place on the Day of Atonement. So we're all being corrected, people. So I'm not throwing rocks at you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to ask an objective question. Uh, Christ says that there's going to be a sign in heaven, and it's going to be after the three and a half year tribulation, and that's going to cause that remnant of people, earthly Israel, in other words. Uh, that's going to cause them to mourn for the one they pierced. That's what the prophets say, people. And they're going to mourn and repent, and great mourning is going to be in all of Judea, great heaviness, because the sign is going to unblind them. That sign in heaven. He did not give them the star in the first advent the Magi got that sign, probably from Daniel about the star. Passed down through Daniel uh, over about a 500-year period, and that's why they come to worship the king, the newborn king. And they follow the star, the sign from heaven. Uh, the Lord, uh, the angels gave the shepherds an earthly sign and that was the babe would be wrapped in swaddling clothes. So that's the, what the, that was the Simeon or an oath that the, that the angels gave the shepherds. And then the Magi got the star when it appeared. Now, the same word in the Greek is used, and then appears the sign. So it's the same Greek word. So there's, it's going to be some Tiffany of brightness, uh, like lightning that comes from the east to the west, uh, it could possibly, uh, it could be the lineup of the heavens, uh, the star there, maybe Venus, Jupiter. I don't know, but just gonna that lightning or that brightness <clears throat> is going to be on a day that is pertinent to the Torah and the feast days. And uh, when we see Luke's account, Luke says uh, in the days of Lot there, uh, the same day Lot was destroyed, in that day that's Passover, that's when, uh, that was the time of the season uh, that Lot had, that same day, uh, Sodom was destroyed with fire and brimstone. Likewise shall it be in when the Son of Man comes. That's going to be the greatest devastation, the greatest tribulation time that's ever been. He's going to destroy the nations, those that come against Israel. He's going to save uh, the earthly remnant. Uh, he's The great earthquake is fixed to destroy Babylon. It's going to be the greatest devastation that's ever been or ever will be again, the Bible says. That's the time factor, and that's when the Messiah gets here. Now, so we got a sign that's going to cause the remnant of his people in that part of the world, they're going to see that heavenly sign. And then the remnant is going to know that that is their Messiah that they pierced 2,000 years ago. That's what uh, Zechariah says. Now, when was he pierced? Or when was the Hebrew word means thrust through? So when was he thrust through? 
Passover. Being the Passover lamb, so it was on Passover. Now, the sign has to be given right before Passover, people. And that's according to the order of what Christ is talking about. Uh, the resurrection of the first fruits, I mean, uh, excuse me, of the Epigalia, or the promise seed, the body of the Messiah, in other words, and all of the uh, old patriots, uh, the prophets, they're completed at our completion. So, they're, they're in our in the same resurrection. That's taking place at the last day at the last trump, which is the end of only uh, day of only Enoch's calendar that year. So Passover is fourteen days later, and the new year, new beginning of months, or the expression, the time of season, or time of life. So that's the appointed day, Passover there, in the season or time of life. So, but the sign is going to be given in the heaven, and then, like I said, what what is the Bible? They're granted grace, a supplication, or prayer to repent, and then the deliverer, like Moses, a type, Christ is the deliverer. He will stand up and fight for them uh, as in the days of old, and he will deliver that remnant of Judah because of uh, where the witnesses and everything is focused on Judah, and then all the outcast. Now, there again, that was the question I asked. So if you thought that it was a sign in heaven, that's the answer. And so, uh, so I, uh, me personally now, I have to had to uh, refute or or uh, admonish my as the resurrected sign in heaven, which is that would have been a sign in heaven. But as I look at this closer, the resurrection was on earth, which was covered up. So, the, so. I believe that the sign is going to be, they will understand it because they seek the signs from heaven. Uh, and the Lord is going to, as Messiah says, he'll give the sign to them in heaven. They'll be unblinded and then they will repent and mourn for the one they pierced. Now, now this is, I'm going to put this out there for people to think about. We're all uh, seeking these end time events, uh, and uh, so there's uh, lots of predictions or or uh, prophecies, so to speak. Uh, but if we're wrong, we we we're wrong, and I do believe that when I taught the sign in heaven as the resurrected saints, uh, I'm seeing that different because. They wasn't given a sign uh, from heaven. They were given the earthly sign of Jonah, and they covered that up as Simeon's prophecy. The resurrection of many in Israel, Matthew 27, 52, was completely covered up. Now, uh, I didn't say that uh, it didn't happen, because yes, I believe 100% it happened. Now, you know, people, if you got a problem with that, man, you can teach whatever you want to teach, but I believe the scripture, old and new, uh, fully uh, teaches that. But that's not the sign they're going to be given for them to cause them to repent. I'm talking about uh, Judah and then the outcast there. So I believe that sign will be uh, more of his, uh, like the star. Rather, I don't see it being the star in the same as as it took the Magi months to follow. I believe it it's going to be something that's going to be like lightning. It's going to flash, which would represent uh, could represent the, the some luminaries lining up. I I don't know, it's, but it is going to be heavenly, and uh, and the Jews. Or those in Judea will will know what it is. But what I do believe, 
according to the Torah, is when this sign will be given will be the 10th day of the first month. Because uh, that is the day that Israel was required to pick a lamb unblemished. And in the 14th by evening, it was to kill the lamb. So for Zechariah's prophecy to say uh, that they're going to be granted great supplication and then they're going to mourn for the one, <clears throat> their only son, the one they pierced, well, the piercing or the thrusting through come for, uh, on the 14th, and that's when Christ sits his feet on the Mount of Olives in that day, Passover, the day that they pierced him. Uh, he's going to sit his feet down that day as king, as not a suffering uh, servant, Messiah, but as king of the earth or the planet there. Now, so I, I believe the sign would be the 10th on the 10th day, when they see that sign in heaven, then that's when they're going to know that they pierced him four days later, 2,000 years ago. So, uh, and I believe that's going to be a heavenly sign, uh, just like the star that pointed where he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. The sign's going to show up in that area, especially in Judea and all those surrounding, uh, uh, all the surrounding land there was given to Abraham. And so that's why his remnant is scattered and those in Judea. Now, we can't forget this. God's mouthpiece, being the two witnesses, are going to be prophesying for three and a half years in Jerusalem. So the, the, their prophecy is going to be to restore or things, uh, or their, their plagues uh, are going to be poured out, which is going to be in type as the plagues were poured out when Moses uh, was delivered to Israel. Uh, and, we're, and we're going to see that... Uh, they have this power, and the heavens, it's not going to rain for three and a half years. That will bring on the full drying up of the River Euphrates, which is also a, this is a major sign, which has been drying up for years now. Uh, so, so we can't forget that by the two witnesses uh, that's going to prophesy in sackcloth and ashes because of the state that Sodom is in, or excuse me, the great city is in a spiritual Sodom and Egypt state. So they know that there's, uh, by the witnesses, that uh, there is definitely a major happening coming. And but once the witnesses are killed, which have to be martyred uh, by the beast, which is a witness uh, means uh, uh, in the Greek it's martyrdom. They die martyrs' death. When Christ was having his uh, conversation with uh, with the apostles. Uh, uh, and he said, some standing here will not taste death until I, till I come, till I'm coming in my kingdom. Uh, then that's what he meant. And, but when he said, I didn't say they wouldn't die. Uh, I just said they wouldn't die until I, right before I come. Well, when you look into that more, the, the whole conversation was that Peter would die a death that would glorify the Father, the, uh, God, Adonai, or Elohim. And that, that would be a martyr. He also said uh, the other apostles died. Uh, you had James, all the other apostles were uh, 
died either by the sword or crucifixion or uh, just like uh, a lot of the prophets and stuff died as Christ said you kill my prophets and so so that's what the in relationship is what the conversation was about it wasn't dying about natural causes uh, now there again a lot of people think Moses is one but it, Moses cannot be one because uh, Moses tasted death now, uh, uh, I, I went and looked up the word tasted uh, or what that would, how that is presented in the Hebrew and how also uh, that word tasted being a Greek word that is used there. And both of them are real close to the same. I've got it all wrote down here, but there's no sense that... Uh, may go on and taking longer and longer. But the word there, according to the Hebrew, according to the Greek, means to experience death. That means you die. So when, it, when, when Christ said, some stand here will not experience death, in other words, taste death. Uh, because you have, you have some, you, uh, there's this one uh, Israel teacher I know that, uh, uh, is very profound in, in making Moses one of the two witnesses. But Messiah said they, some standing will not taste death. So will not experience death. Moses experienced death. So that eliminates him if you believe you're Savior. Now, you know, we, we can argue about things, and but I mean, those things I think are very clear. Or we can... Uh, feel that uh, other things that are being said might be contradictory, but that's not contradictory at all, except if people have an agenda. Uh, the other thing is uh, when I teach that John, the blood, which what Christ is pointing to, which Peter wanted to know about John, and he said, what is he tarries till I come? What's it to you, Peter? The answer is when you get when you go into when you go into uh, I believe it's in Matthew uh, and the sons of Zebedee's when the mother brought them to Christ and said that she wanted them to sit uh, what what side the right hand or the left hand and Christ said that's not for him to give but he said I will say this that <clears throat> can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized with? Now, that is a blood baptism. It's had nothing to do with water. Christ was speaking of his death. See? And they said yes, and I, they didn't know what they were, what Christ was talking about. I'm sure they probably thought it was water. And they said, yes, and Christ said, and you will. Now, there again, here's another thing that's been left out uh, uh, according to what the Messiah said. He said, you will be baptized like me. What he meant was by a martyrdom death. Now, who is he talking to? Uh, most of your people or scholars believe that was James and John. And James and John was on the Mount of Transfiguration with the Messiah and also Peter. That's who he took up there. And so now think, now let's, let's just, about what the Messiah said. There's nowhere in Scripture people that you can find where the beloved John died a mortem's death in scripture. James died by the sword. Uh, <clears throat> the other apostles there we know were martyred. But John, John the Baptist was beheaded but 
John the Revelator, the ones you're the one that wrote the Apostle John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and Revelation. He was on the island of Patmos. That's how it ends. Now, now there again, uh, we don't find that in the Scripture. We don't find anywhere Elijah died in the Scripture. Now, so Elijah and John is, according to Scripture, is what I believe the two witnesses are. That's why I teach that. But now, one thing I want you to think about, you, you you know, you come back and say, well, Josephus or the historian wrote this book and it says he John died of old age in the assembly of Ephesus or he was around 100 and something. Well, now let's just, let's just take this by what the scripture says. Now, Whatever historian wrote that that lived back then that says that John died, but what did Christ say to those two sons? That you'll be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with. You don't, you're going to die a mortal's death. Now, what I'm saying is, the ones that report John dying even says he was boiled in oil and didn't die, but yet he died of natural causes. Well, then Christ, Christ is, made a false statement there. You see where all this, that's why I, I really believe when Christ said, when I come, when I return, will I find faith, Shame. the faith on earth? Because it takes faith to believe that. See, it takes faith to believe that Christ said to them, you're going to die a martyr on death. Now, that's why the two witnesses stand up, and they do die. A, they don't die of natural causes, people. The beast comes out of the pit and overcomes them, makes war of them, and kills them. They are killed because of their testimony. That's a witness. That's martyrdom. So, you know, I have had uh, people that disagree on certain things I've seen. That's fine. Or what I teach. But I had this one gentleman uh, in particular, won't call his name. I don't know how many times he killed pointing and pushing that witness uh, well what what makes you think that he, the that one of the witnesses can't die is it impossible for God to raise them no are you kidding me he's going to resurrect them but when you look in Hebrews uh, 9 28 for those that understand that's a deception unto men it's one's appointed to die it's talking about the man it's talking about the two witnesses I've thought on that but it says it is appointed once for them to die. They can't die and then be resurrected and then die the mortem's death. That's what Christ said. You will die, you will taste death by blood baptism. See, so that's, that's what the scripture says. Now you can use your Hebrew idioms and you can say that that's, uh, not a Hebrew expression? Are you kidding me? Who are you supposed to be following? Your Savior. What he says is where the buck stops. That's it. So uh, he says that in the, in the Gospels. See, take up your cross, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow your Messiah. So uh, uh, that now, hopefully, that's gonna help some people. And if you still believe Moses is one of the prophets, or if you think that uh, uh, why does the two witnesses, or why can't they've already died? Then bank that. I'm telling you what the Messiah said. So if John had died by natural causes then the Messiah is not telling the truth because he said you're going to die of blood baptism. 
that means you're going to shed your blood for what you believe and you're, uh, you're going to either be stoned, beheaded, the two witnesses are lying in the streets so they're not crucified hanging in a tree. So now you can you can pick every way they stone. They stone today. They've never quit that. Uh, and or the sower. But nevertheless, the beast will overcome and kill them, people. That's a martyrum's death. And Christ said, so you they couldn't. John couldn't die a martyr's death because it's only once for him, the men to die a martyr's death like he did. He was a faithful uh, martyr uh, witness there at Christ in Revelation 1. So we need to really stick and we need to, all of us need to stick with what the Messiah said. Whoever, if you're studying the scripture or following the scripture, and, and that's what I have to, uh, what I uh, teach, and I'm flawed too. I'm still in the flesh. And that's why I'm saying to you, uh, the resurrection of uh, the first fruits, which I do believe, or, or Christ's resurrection, him being the first fruit that was raised, uh, first rank in order, uh, over all things, then, uh, but that was an earthly sign and they covered it up. But this heavenly sign that will cause uh, the remnant of his people when right before he gets here, great morning in Jerusalem will not be because somebody's preaching the gospel to them. The two witnesses have uh, opened that the people in his witness and brought judgment and plagues upon uh, Jerusalem and Judea, but they are martyred. And then the Lord uh, will give the sign, which I do believe will be, and some don't believe that, that's fine. I'm going by, I don't believe the, they would give the sign on the sixth day, seventh day, eighth day of the first month, ninth day, tenth day. Because then there's going to, that sign, if they know the tenth day is where they choose the lamb and they kill the lamb. Uh, so uh, they know that's the day that uh, when they uh, put the blood on the doorpost when Moses let them out of, out of uh, Egypt, the same pattern is coming again. The same day that Lot went out of Sodom and God destroyed it. Uh, Luke tells you exactly uh, Christ quotes and gives the same time factor that is given in Genesis 18. So Christ repeats that in the days of Lot. So uh, hopefully that uh, this will help. Uh, and it's going to be, um, this is all I want to uh, go into and I'm just giving you, a, going over this. So there again, the question being, there's going to be a sign from heaven uh, that will in turn cause them to mourn for the one they pierced. Then they see him coming in the clouds and when he sits his feet on the Mount of Olives in that day, that is Passover. So I believe that sign is going to be on the 10th in heaven and that's going to cause the great mourning as Christ comes in the clouds with power and great glory. Uh, now, uh, so as I close here, let me let me uh, throw this other just just a red flag, people, for those that are uh, are trying to put everything into one pot, so to speak. If I say to you th that what Paul teaches, what the Messiah talks about, the resurrection of the last day, if you're doing the will of the Father, uh, if you're eating and drinking of the bread that comes from heaven, if you don't, you don't have any life in you, and that's he's leading us straight into Passover as the new covenant is with his disciples. As they eat the bread, his body representing his body that's broken, and, and the, the drink represents the blood he sheds for many. 
so they so we have to do the same see so that that I, that's why I don't understand how anybody could take communion on a Sunday and I watch these people do that and they quote Matthew they read Matthew 26 and they even read as they're doing communion on Sunday uh, they read those scriptures and they even read the scripture that Christ said to his apostles, I will not drink of the fruit of this vine until I drink of it in that day when I, when I come into my kingdom. They read that scripture, people. And that day is in, re in reference to what day was he uh, doing the uh, meal. It was on Passover. And yet, all these hundreds and hundreds of years, myself included, was taking communion on Sunday. And, all, and now he said, I will not drink of this until I drink it with you. His body, the body of the Messiah, the church, the ecclesia, the called out assembled that he said he would build and the gates of Hades would not prevail against it. And yet, we got hundreds of millions of professed Christians that take communion every Sunday, once a quarter, uh, or once a month, or once every quarter. And they think that's doing the will. And Christ says, unless you're doing the will of the Father, redeeming the times, and unless you're following me on these times, uh, you're not going to enter the kingdom. He says that. So hopefully, even if some hear this, it might be we all come from there. Uh, Lord willing, maybe some will be quickened and called out of there. Now, the other thing I was going to say is if you're a believer and you're following the Messiah and you're part of the promised seed through Isaac, which is Christ's seed, which you've been birthed of, the Word of God. You've been birthed of His Word. That's why we, not our own anymore, we are His uh, witnesses. We are His Word. Uh, teaching the Logos. Preaching in season. Eucharos, Eucharos. Isn't it amazing, I will say, that the evangelism or the good news is, uh, is not, uh, the promise is epi, Epigalia. The good news is you, Galia, which you means good. Uh, well done, good and faithful servants. The word uh, good is uh, the prefix in the Greek is you. There again, in the uh, when Paul says in Timothy uh, to preach the logos, uh, that's uh, Eucharos. Eucharos divine is good the uh, the uh, good news that the angels pronounced when Christ was born to the shepherds and to all people uh, that is you a galia which means the good news and evangel being the gospel and that amazing so so we are the promised seed which is epigalia which is a divine message and then also you have you, Agalia, which is the good news to all people. So, so but now as I, as I ask uh, this question, for those that are found worthy in the resurrection, think about this. Now, I mean, let's, we're all trying, as Daniel says, trying to purify. Uh, they're trying to make us... We're all put on the white line, in other words. This is what people are. So we're all we're all wanting to, to all to come. The ones that are really studying, uh, coming to the light. But think of this: where is when Paul says in the resurrection of the dead in Christ rise, those alive remain. Where are we going to meet the Messiah? See. Well, there you, we're going to meet him in the air, in the clouds, okay? Just think about this. 
Now, in that day, how is his people? What is he going to do and has to do? Now, they're, they're already believers because they've seen the sign and they're mourning and they're crying out. Now, what what is he going to do to rescue or save those people? Deliver, save. How is he going to save them? If you, if you are part of the epigalia, the promised seed, that means a resurrection, uh, you meet him in the air, in the clouds. Okay, now, wh what, is he, what does the prophet say? How is he going to gather the remnant of those people? Think about that. How is he going to gather them? Well, the, well, the prophets say he's fixing to make a highway seven times of what he did when Moses led them out in a one lane across the Egyptian sea. Now, just think about that. Now, are you think you think they're both the same? It's a red flag, people. Now, if you think they're both the same, then you're going to have to show me scripture that why would he make a highway in seven lanes to bring his remnant, the two houses, into the land? Why would he do that? If that's us, then why do we meet him in there? You got two different prophecies here, people. I'm just, I'm just asking you, are you people out there that want to stone what I'm saying? And that's fine. Stone it. But there's one thing you're going to have to ask yourself. No matter how much you think you're teaching the two houses and doing that, that is pathetically true. But you can't be part of, you can't meet him in the air and then come back down, what are you going to do? Is he going to put you back down on the earth, open up seven lanes, and you're going to walk in uh, to uh, Abraham's land? I'm just asking you to think about it. Because you, you tell me how that fits. And buddy, uh, because his life, my life is the Messiah. It is Christ. That's what, that's what the Bible says. We've been bought and paid for. But when you've got these prophecies like that, you just tell me. So there's another question I want to ask you. If, if you were found worthy to be raised at the last day of the last trump, where do you meet the Messiah? You don't meet him in Abraham's land. Now that's where we're going. But you meet him in the clouds, in the air. What Now where is he? Who, what's he making a, a wave of seven... A lane highway in the tongue of the Red Sea, the part, the big part of the Egyptian Sea or the Nile River. What is he? What you tell me? What's that? What prophecy is that? Hopefully, people. All I'm trying to do is give uh, you scripture and let you uh, and show that something. There's you got. We got to go further. If you're stuck on that too, then you can't be meeting him in the air and then crossing the Red Sea. Now, if 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 that's if you put that together, then tell me how you coming back down out of the air and getting on the ground and then mourning for the one that perished when you have been made alive in Christ, the mystery of Christ is Christ in you, the hope of glory. But it is all under the umbrella of the king, and it's all we're all under the umbrella of Israel. So hopefully, maybe this will make some sense, maybe, but that's my question to you. If he makes a highway seven lanes for you to come in, then why 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 are we going up to meet him in the air? Who's this who's all these going up here? And then who's all these is coming in? So something to think about. I'm not telling you to uh, that. I'm, I'm I'm showing I'm showing these things in Scripture. Think about them. Pray about them. 
But you're going to have to come to the conclusion. What, what Isaiah's prophesying is not Isaac's seed. You're going to have to come to see that there's a mystery here. But there is one thing. We're all under Israel. I mean, that's who God's people is. But there's three measures there. That's all I'm going to say. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that spirit witness to your spirit as we pray to these scriptures with one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, soon coming King. Amen.